Okay, so we are live. So let's go ahead and start with introductions. So Vicki, why don't you go ahead and start? Okay, um, I'm Vicki Sedgwick. I'm a K-8 um, tech teacher at a small um, private Episcopal school. So, interested in creative ideas. So. Okay, and you're next. Go ahead, George. George, can you hear me? Yes. I'm here. Do you want to introduce right yourself? Oh. Hello. Uh, my name is George Summers. I'm currently the K through eight uh, computer teacher at a Lady Mercy School in Merced, and I also teach uh, college classes at uh, Merced uh, Junior College. Uh, locally a, a, a couple nights a week. Awesome. Um, my name is Lisa Nowakowski. I teach fifth grade um, in here in California and yeah. <laughs> so I'm not too sure what this session is about. Um, I just know it's Creative Computer Lab. So how can we create um, really great creativity I guess in in, in computer labs. So what are your thoughts and ideas? Well my challenge is that I always um, I only see the students once a week so it's really hard to get into some projects that extend over several sessions. So that's kind of my um, challenge that, that I'm dealing with. Um, uh, I try and do what I have with the limited technology that I have and a very uh, shoestring budget technology wise um, and so there's I, I'm always looking for new ideas which is why I, which is why I wanted to sign into this this uh, session so what are some things that you um, do with your students that have been working uh, lately we've been getting into more of the uh, the uh, learn to code stuff has been really successful. Uh, even down to uh, second grade, it had a huge uh, success with that. So I'll definitely be expanding on that this year. Um, we have a uh, Lego Mindstorm robot that we've been using, and some of the kids have been coming in on their lunchtime uh, to uh, to use that and play with that. So that's been a lot of fun just to see what they that they want to do with that and, and I, I kind of get my vibe uh, you know from the kids um, we do most of our work in, in uh, Google Drive and so I'm just learning a little bit more I want to do a little bit more with we video maybe and that kind of stuff we just got new computers in the computer lab mm, over Christmas break as a matter of fact so that was a huge uptick so I'm just getting used to the fact that I've got actually good computers that can actually do something because up until that point, we had everything from two-year-old computers to eleven-year-old computers, and everything in between. It was like a museum. And <laughs> uh, but I still have a Bondi Blue 2001 um, iMac sitting on a shelf, just just uh, because. So um, that we were using until very recently. So um, uh, anyway, that's kind of why I wanted to wanted to hear maybe what Vicky and some others have to have had to contribute. Well, I see my kids um, twice a week, but it's only an hour total, so I have them a half an hour at a time. So it, there is the issue of getting things done. Um, I do just approach things that if I have to go multiple um, classes, I go multiple classes. There are some things we've done that have taken you know, a month to get done because of things where classes were interrupted. You know, I may supposed to see the kids eight times, but I saw them five times. So, you know, it wasn't that ma that much hour-wise. And, um, you know, the big problem with multiple classes is you have to review again at the start every time. So you do yes. have wasted time. But in order to get really creative, 
and to do things that are more meaningful, I think I have to take multiple classes um, to do it. You know, it's very difficult to finish something in 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the class that I have. So, um, you know, we also got into coding a lot and computer science stuff. I want to do more of that next year where I'm going to take an entire quarter, I think, and just concentrate on computer science related things for most of the grades. I teach K to 8, so kindergarten and first, probably not the whole quarter, but um, we'll do, I'll do more. I, have, I did stuff with them, but not as much. So, um, But I also am required to teach, you know, productivity apps. And um, we've had Word and um, Microsoft Office, but I'm going to be converting the lab, I think, to Linux this summer because we're still on Microsoft XP. Um, and so I've got to get off of that. So we're probably going to Linux, and so we'll do most things in um, Google Apps since we are a Google Apps school. Um, but I have to teach that, and I'm also um, required to do some keyboarding. So it's very difficult to fit all that in and be creative. Um, how how now, George, can do I you... ask? Go ahead. No, ask the question. Okay. Go, uh, how? Uh, when do you start your keyboarding? Um, well, I do pre pre keyboarding stuff starting in kindergarten. In kindergarten, we work on um, just like they work on phonics and stuff for reading. I work on kinder on keyboarding skills on learning to recognize where the letters are, upper to lowercase matching, that kind of stuff. Um, and learning how to use the backspace key and you know those kinds of things. First grade we concentrate on I start working with using two hands. Not proper fingering yet, but I want them to use two hands when they're trying to type. And then starting in probably halfway through second grade I do a little bit of more formal. I really started in third grade. Um, and I emphasize it a lot in third through sixth really by the time my kids are 7th and 8th, they're pretty proficient at keyboarding. I always think they're not until we get a new student and then I realize that my kids are <laughs> much more proficient at keyboarding than I thought they were. Because right, right. when we get a new student, they're hunting and pecking and my kids are not hunting and pecking, even the ones that tend to fight you on using proper hand positions and things like that. So, yeah, uh, yeah. But I don't like to waste a lot of class time in it. So typically keyboarding is the first five to ten minutes of class and then we'll go into something else. Um, I don't like to you know spend a quarter on keyboarding. It just seems like a waste of lab time. I mean I know they need to know how to keyboard but everything we do, it, pretty much everything we do is online so they can go do it at home and I try and encourage that and some of them do. Not all of them, but some of them will practice at home because you can see what lessons they've done. And I give some kind of rewards for the kids that have done the most at home and that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I'm not as interested in speed as in doing it correctly because the ones yes. who do it correctly by the time they hit 7th and 8th grade are fast. So my emphasis is on yeah. um, proper technique. Yeah, you can't have you can't have uh, speed without accuracy. So I I I appreciate I can appreciate that sentiment. That's exactly what I what I focus on. We've had a lot of success with Typing Club, using the Typing Club, and that does work right in with uh, the Google uh, uh, Drive accounts. We're right. a Google Apps for Education school. They don't have email, but they they have um, they have accounts, and I will assign them. Uh, assignments to do levels uh, as as homework between the the times I see them each week, and that's that's been uh, we did started that this year, and it's been real real successful. I think the kids have have really made good inroads. Kind of like flipping a little bit, you know, having them do that uh, um, outside of class, so we can focus on more Google Doc stuff in class. Right. Um. Do you do a lot of collaborative stuff with your kids where they collaboratively write or collaboratively work on presentations and things like that? Because I want to get more into that. We're doing Next more and year more of that. Some. My eighth graders uh, last last uh, semester did a, a Civil War 
project where they were working on on a Google Slides together, and they really appreciate uh, that they can collaborate and work together. and And you can see in the history who's worked on who's done what part of the document. So it's worked out really. That's worked out really well. I definitely want to do more of that. We don't start until the fifth grade with with Google Apps. I may push it down um, to a little bit lower than that. Now that I feel you need to push it down. When I taught third grade, um, I had my kids doing um, documents and presentations and things like that. And even in third grade, they were collaborating on documents and and presentations. So, so are I you keeping that. are you keeping their, their their passwords somewhere in the classroom that they can? I think that was my main yeah. concern was they wouldn't remember their passwords. I have. Um, a, um, go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead, Vicky. No, go ahead. Uh, I just have a set of what I call login cards that I keep that has everybody's, you know, their their Google Apps, you know, login um, information and then information for whatever else, what other sites we may have that may not use the Google Apps account, and so they're lo they can get their login card um, every time they come to the lab. So, and I've used Google Docs. I've actually even done some stuff down into kindergarten with it. Now, they don't log in. With them, I will share, for example, a Google presentation with a link, and I put it on my um, wiki that, that they know how to, they go to that, that's their home page, and mm -hmm. then they can click on the link and go into it and add the information to the presentation. For example, they created a picture of some kind. I created a presentation that had all their pictures, so they had to find their picture, and then they had to write a sentence or something about that picture, um, so that then it became um, something I could easily share online with anybody. So there, but they did all the, you know, they created the picture in. Um, we use Tux Paint, so they created it in Tux Paint. I had to upload the pictures to the presentation, not that the kids couldn't have done it, but you, if you are editing a Google presentation through anyone with a link, if you're not logged in, you can't upload a picture. So, And I didn't get into Google Apps logins for kindergarten or first, but I've done it with second and above um, where they actually log in. So Now, is that still true that they can't do... Um, images now that they have that research toolbar on the side? You can't insert them. I think oh. what it is, um, I'm, I'm guessing maybe it has something to do with copyright. They want to know an account that inserted a picture maybe or something. I don't know. Or they want to know where to store the picture. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know why they don't just associate it with the account that owns the document, but they don't. Um, it won't let you insert a picture. I don't believe, I mean, I haven't tried it this summer, but um, I tried it pretty late in the year, where if it was anyone with a link, you can add text, you know, you can add a drawing, but you can't insert an image. That's interesting. I didn't know that that, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't either until I tried it, <laughs> and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my students love doing collaboration. Like I said, they do um, all sorts of collaboration all year long. Like in, we do fifth grade. And so my students do, they write, uh, I don't know, a document of some sort. And they're sharing it with each other. They're getting input from each other. Um, they're, you know, adding, you know, this, you know, doing paragraphs and editing for each other. It's, it's amazing to see what they can do. That's great. Uh, do either of you do any work with uh, Google Drawings? Yes. Um, not a whole lot of work. Well, no, we did. We we did a bit of work. I I enjoyed it. It's it's relatively easy. I think it's easy for students to do. And then the more you get into it, you can uh, change around the dimensions and things like that. So, yeah, I had uh, this year. I had my seventh grade as part of our digital citizenship um, 
section of lessons, they created um, a flow chart basically of computer troubleshooting computer problems. So they created a flow chart of, you know, how, what you should do if you run into a problem with your computer. Like, what if it won't turn on? What should you do? And so they used Google Drawing for that. Um, in the past, I've actually done collaborative um, Google Drawings with both within within a class. Um, we participated one year in a um, a progressive story project and so our cl my class wrote one section of the story and then they had to illustrate that section and they needed three pictures and so I divided the class up and you know six five to six kids created each picture um, to go with their section of the story so that was kind of fun and we've also done one with um, another school where we did a Google drawing together where they had to draw something that was also um, something digital citizenship related um, it's great for creating infographics and stuff too though I haven't done as much of that as I'd like with them because there's other tools that we've used for that too so yeah I've used it for um, slight infographics as well I have changed it I did a project last year where my students for ELD um, watched a video and then they had to record certain information from the video like just ELD related things and what I ended up doing is just putting it together nicely onto a Google drawing and then they were able to go in and manipulate it and to write on it and type on it and to make it look like a really nice presentation almost so they just had one picture that they were working with so that worked out well too I like Google Draw yeah, and they've really added some really nice uh, cropping features and stuff. I like the fact that every couple of months there's some new stuff uh, that they keep adding to, so its deficiencies are not as uh, as uh, uh, much as it used to be in terms of yeah. some other tools. So it's, it's, it's really coming along. It's really good to see what they're doing. It is neat. It's really cool. So... I'm interested in, um, George, what you feel was like the most creative thing you did with a class. What was a good creative project that um, this maybe this year or even last year that you did with a class that, because I'm just kind of, um, now do you work with the teachers so that you know that you're working with the classroom teachers so that um, it's curriculum aligned or do you come up with what they're doing? I'm constantly looking to the teachers to go, okay, what are you teaching? How do I reinforce what you do? Because that's my, that's my, my right. uh, you know, main purpose. So I'm constantly uh, doing that. I used to have a little worksheet that I'd have them fill out, but now I just talk to them. And since all right. of our teachers blog, I have a really good sense of what they're already doing in the classroom. And so... Um, that's been really helpful too, getting the teachers to blog. Probably the 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 what I'm most uh, I think excited about uh, in terms of creativity is that uh, I just love to podcast, and so I do have um, I have a, a Yeti microphone, and we get into GarageBand, and even in the younger kids, if I just have them you know break up a poem or something like uh, "Twas the Night Before Christmas" or something like that, and then they enjoy hearing themselves, and then and then the parents get some great feedback from the parents. I think I um, those are the kind of things that I enjoy doing um, uh, in terms of getting the kids to be to be creative. I think until recently I haven't been able to have the students to be real artistic. Like I've always had hardware problems because my computers were not all the same. Um, uh, and that made it really difficult to try and do anything. I've done the text paint, but then some of the computers wouldn't run the text paint. And um, as much as possible, I like I, I don't pair up the students uh, as much uh, just because I try and I want them to have it as much hands-on as possible. But I suppose that's an option, you know. So, uh, in terms of drawing and stuff in the younger grades, they don't, they don't, they're not doing much of that yet, just because we just, the new computers are just so new, and we just haven't delved into it as much. 
have some Minecraft, um, George, in the background. Do you, have you thought about using Minecraft in the classroom? Yeah, my son is all into Minecraft, but uh, and I I definitely want to. I mean, he's been trying to give me lessons. Uh, I've been working a lot in creative mode, and you know I think I did something really awesome. And then my daughter come, who's a, who's you know 16, will come along and. She'll make this ginormous castle on a hill with a ten foot library, you know. I'm like, oh man. So, I, one of my goals next year is to set up a, a Minecraft uh, server and get that going, or do something with Minecraft EDU. Um, I, I, the the I I I want to do that somehow. I don't know how to make that happen financially because uh, you know I just our money is just extremely tight, and. Um, it you know it barely meets our needs as it is. So, um, and I'm also by default I'm the IT guy. So, you know we run we run an open source firewall, and we you know I do whatever I can that's on the cheap, uh, so that I can I can make things happen um, that that you know needs to happen in the background. So, um, but yeah, definitely Minecraft is is on my radar. If you need any help with that, um, uh, John Miller works in my school district, and I'm good friends with him. I can hook you up with him. He's like okay. Uber into into that, so I can hook you up with him, and he can probably help you and, and work with you in some way um, that, with the Minecraft stuff. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I just got an account a couple of a couple of uh, weeks ago, and so I'm like, you know, I and I've seen. I don't know if you've seen the. Um, uh, Escape Tomorrow uh, uh, mod. That's really cool. Yeah. You should Google that one. A, a, a class developed this over a couple of years, and it's a simulation where they they all have to figure out how to work together, and uh, they're all on different islands with different resources, and they have to get off the island before it blows up um, uh, out of the world, rather. So, uh, yeah, definitely, I see the excitement, and my kids are asking, "Hey, can we play Minecraft?" And so I want I want to do that. Um, I definitely want to do that. I just need to make that happen somehow. Yeah, just either contact me or John Miller. I can get you in contact with him. So John Miller is like my guru go-to for um, Minecraft. I don't understand Minecraft, and my students try to keep explaining it to me, and I just I don't get it. I'm like whatever. It it's obnoxious. It, it's dizzying. It, I just don't like it. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, you know, my son grew up on the Legos, and um, he's played with the Lego Mindstorms, and and he's delved in Scratch. We've been doing a lot of Scratch too at school. That's been a lot. That's been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, and so he kind of keeps up on that, and and I've been trying to learn from him. Yeah. I think kids are the best way to learn from. I mean, it, they get it. They know what they're going to do. Just kind of go with them. That's my general philosophy. Well, yeah, and I'm learning the process too. You know, and I want to. I want to learn what they're into, and, and I see that there are some great you know, some teachers doing great things with it. And uh, you know, you want to feed off the the kids' excitement on it, and go, okay, what can we do with this? You know, I'm not locked into. What I'm doing so much that I can't, um, you know, build on that and expand in other ways. I want to grow and learn. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another thing I think you can do inside, since you guys are both um, Google, is uh, create like digital portfolios and then have the students, um, you know, have you know, do that inside a a, a, lab, a computer lab. Yeah, I do that. My um, my middle school and next year I'm gonna probably have fourth and fifth do it also. I'll have um, Google sites and everything they do, they post on their Google sites. So that's part of the assignment for them. You know, it might be okay. You're creating, you know, you're you're doing this thing for digital citizenship, and when you're done with it, you're gonna po post it on your Google site. So um, my middle school all has it, and they have for. <laughs> I think I've done that for the last four years, four or five years with middle school. And next year, um, my fifth graders have talked me into letting them have it. And then I'll probably do it with fourth also. I think they could probably handle it, no problem. They probably can't handle some of the editing that of the sites that the older kids do, but they can handle the basics of pick a theme. Yeah, and, you get a maze. You know. 
I had a third I grade. We didn't do, um, I just started this year with um, portfolios, e-portfolios with Google Sites. Did you use a template? Have the students use a template? I, yeah, I have a template that I have them use that I created. Mm -hmm. um, basically, each, it's broken down by grade and then by quarter, and then under each quarter, it's, um, it's you know, each assignment is just a post, and they just post it that way. Um, and I use, um, and then they have an About Me page, and they can post whatever they want on it, you know, like it, you, they could post stuff from other classes too, and I always get asked, can I, and I always say yes, and then no one ever does, which is kind of disappointing, but, you know, <laughs> someday somebody will. Um, you know, the only thing I don't let them do um, is with the older ones, I tell them you cannot link out to your Facebook page or your Instagram account or things like that because my school is very much a I can't identify a student with their picture so anything that would have a picture posted with their name I can't have them link out to so it's just the rule we can they can post stuff with their names they can have their voice on it um, we can even post pictures but not of individual students identified by name so okay so what what are the what do you do with that that portfolio data once they they move on? What what do you do with that? Well, um, I give them the option to um, use Google Takeout, and I give them instructions on how to do that if they want to take it with them. I keep them actually. We haven't since we're a small school. We haven't run out of accounts yet. Um, so until we run up against the limit of, of uh, accounts, we just keep them and the, you, I use them as examples you know for student next year students and things like that but I give them instructions on how they can use Google Takeout if they want to take it with them and I do tell them it will still be around if you want to go look at it or refer to it or show it to somebody so I've had a couple students that definitely have done Google take on on it and then have done some stuff with it and actually done um, added stuff to it after the fact um, where they did link out to other stuff but that was okay because they posted on their individual Google account and that's fine um, then I don't care if they link at other places but you're yeah, not gonna sure. link this you know the school one out so yeah. 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 Well, that's great. That's great. We haven't had a big Google's push great. for e-portfolios at our school yet, so but I think that that's coming. Well, I don't print much of anything anymore, and so I use either um, a blog. Uh, the, uh, we have a computer lab blog that I'll post work on, or the kids post it on their sites because... I, you know, I'm not going to waste the paper, and they they want to share it, and their parents want to see it. So it's a way that they can share the work, and ours are all public; they're all um, shared to the world. So we haven't run into any problems. I had one student last year who started at the end of the year, who didn't sign, who uh, never got the paperwork back <laughs> that she was um, allowed to 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 use it. So hers is private; um, it's not public to the world but um, most everybody else are public because they sign something at the beginning of the year that they can be and if they can't for some reason then we I still have them they just are not public they're only shared with their classmates so Great. now Lisa you say you use um, e-portfolios now yeah I Did started you? last year um, yeah. And I kind of set mine up similar to yours, a little bit different. So I set it up so that they could take it with them to 6th grade, 7th grade, and 8th grade because we're just a K-8 district. And so I have it like set up by grade. They have an About Me page. And then in each grade, I have it set by trimester. And then in trimester, I have it set up with um, each. I just let them pick like one. It was my experimental year, so it was like pick up one. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, just yeah. pick one yeah. your best whatever that you did for math or language arts or whatever, and then you know they posted it. And some of them wanted to post other things in addition, and I was like, yeah, that's fine. And you know, like you, they ask and then they never do it, and you know, whatever. Right. So <laughs> I figure yeah. somebody will someday. So <laughs> exactly. 
Um, I'm dropping a link into the chat that okay. is my um, our blog. Our blog. Um, um, it's not the one that it hasn't got all the work on it that it should have, but it, on the right hand side in the sidebar of that are the links to the student e portfolios from. Oh, cool. This yeah, past I didn't three years. I didn't put ours up. I just didn't, I didn't know what I was doing with it, so and I was they're, like, okay. um, Go ahead. Hey, my experimental year, I, we just went live with them, and I was like, yeah, whatever, let's go, <laughs> you know, let's go for it. And I figured I could always take them down if there was something, you know, because they could always change permissions, like, immediately, so it wasn't like it was a big deal. Um, yeah. I also am um, a co-owner of everybody's um, uh, Google site, so that... Mm -hmm. um, if I need to change anything, I can. Because the big problem I have with middle schoolers is they like to set colors so that it's like almost unreadable. And so I have been known to go in and change their um, color scheme because <laughs> I'm going, if I can't read it, I can't grade it. So <laughs> if you have a black background with navy writing, I'm going to go change your color scheme. So, um, so Vicky, is that I usually give them a shot. Vicky, is that basically how you do the moderation uh, uh, piece? Is that you, you let them, you instruct them to, to post something they posted, but you go back through and see if it's a, you know, a, a appropriate or things need to be changed. Is that how you do that? Yeah, and I really don't. They know what's appropriate, what's not. We talk about that before we start with it. And I've only had one or two that have ever posted anything that I've um, had to have them change. Now, quality-wise, you know, we have discussions all the time of this could be much better. But um, as far as appropriate or not, I really haven't had anybody um, push that envelope because, one, I'm watching what they're doing anyway as they're doing it because they're posting them at school. Um, they can at home. Um, but most of them don't. But um, and so I'm watching what they're doing, and they know it. And everything they post gets turned into me. Um, we I use Edmodo for that, and they turn everything in. They just turn the link in, and so that's how they turn assignments into me. Is they turn a link into their Google site post, and um, then I go and check check it. So I mean it's pretty, you know, whatever. And if I ever had a kid that was being inappropriate, I'd probably take them private for a while. Uh, I mean I would just have it, you know, just shared with he and I or she and yeah. I and then until and when they could prove they could handle it again, then you can open it back up again. It's nice cuz you can easily change the permissions and they still get to they still are doing the exercises, they're still doing the assignments. And they're still doing them the same way everybody else is. They're just not shared with the world anymore. So. Right, right. And uh, we don't really have any any kind of um, CMS. We don't have any any Edmodo piece to like that, which is why I'm really looking forward to what they're doing with Google Classroom. Have you, right. have you guys seen uh, the demos on that yet? I have access to it for my for my domain. Oh, lucky you. Awesome. I haven't gotten in yet, but I've seen the demos and it looks good. Um, I don't know. There's things I don't like about it because right now I use um, Doctopus and G Class folders and I like those because I can see their work as they're doing it. I can comment on it. I can do whatever. Whereas with Google Classroom, they're the owner of the document till they turn it into me. And I think that goes totally against what Google Apps is. I don't get that. I mean, they could explicitly share it with me, but they'd have to share it with me. So, um, whereas with Octopus and G Class folders, mm -hmm. I just set it up so, you know, they're just shared with, things are shared with me. I, you know, we, they're automatically use, shared with me. I haven't done much with Octopus, but I do use uh, and love G Class folders. I think that's, that has made the whole process so much easier. Um, I mm -hmm. think with I think with Google Classroom, uh, you you almost have to set it up where they're turning in a um, uh, a, a draft that you look at first, and then 
you submit it back to them with some edits so that they, because they can't edit it until you turn it back to them. And so it, it would almost have to be like a scheduled – There's you can still do the formative assessment piece, but you need to turn it back to them you know, and have it kind of say, okay, you turned it in by this date, I'll take a look at it, and then, you know, you turn it back to them before the, the final grade. So it's, it's you'd have to, I think, structure it that way uh, from what I've seen because once they turn it in, they're locked out, and once you yeah. send it back, once you grade you're it, locked you're locked out. So right. I, I see what you're saying. I think what, if you were to use it, I think you'd basically have to have to treat it at initially with a couple of stages of drafts until until the the final grade. You know, um, on the same document. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that Google um, listens to the feedback because they are asking teachers for feedback, and that was one of my criticisms, and that's. I've been hearing that over and over again, especially those of us who have used like Doctopus or um, G Class Folder, is that there are some things that you can do with that that you can't do with Google Classroom that I should be able to see the kids' progress as they're working. I don't, you know, I don't know if they're working or not because I don't have access to it. And I have a huge right. issue with that. Yeah, so yeah. I'm hoping that they change it. This is just the first iteration, so they got it out this summer so they could get right. teacher feedback. and. I've been blogging about it on my blog. Um, yeah. So, I yeah, I hope they change it too. If they don't, I think I will tell the kids they explicitly have to share it with me, um, you know, so that uh, I can still continue to monitor their progress. It's just a shame. Plus, it doesn't force organization. One of the things I like with G Class folders is it's forcing an organization on their work um, and my kid the kids in my class I don't know about the kids in your class but they tend not to remember where they put files or what they did or whatever whereas with G class folders you're kind of and Dr. Push you're pushing them out in in a formalized structured way so it's it's already in folders for them they can see what's going on they well um, this does so it kind of for them. Them. I think that way. Okay. It does. It does. It it automatically creates a classroom folder for them, and then every time I create a uh, assignment, that assignment is given a folder, so they get a folder too. So let me see. Do I have that? Maybe I can share that side of it. And I yeah, I do oh, like the some... auto. I do like the auto naming feature where it automatically adds their name to the end of it, and it, they create it automatically makes a copy of the document and then adds their name to their copy. I do like that. That stuff is great in terms of the yeah. management because my kids are always forgetting to, you know, I get them to make a copy, but then they don't put it back in their, their computer assignments folder that we have set up in G in uh, G class folders. And when I go to grade it, it's not there. So I still, no matter how much I try and drill it into them, I put it on the board, I do it, you know, the, pro the process, the workflow, you always got a few for whom that, that's going to be a problem. That part of Google um, Classroom, I really, I really like. But there is that um, uh, the, the the access, the editing rights that I think they're going to have to work on a little bit. Absolutely, I'm looking at it now. Do you want me to share it with you, or no? We have a few minutes. Sure, go um, ahead. Okay, yeah. um, love to see. Yeah, uh, share. Screen share. And then I can show you because they do. I've been using. Um, I have a couple. Um, come on, come on, come on, come on. Because I have too many things up now. My computer's freaking out. Um, there it is. Google Classroom. Screen share. Okay, you can see it. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So. That's there it is. Oh goodness. Okay, I'm freaking my computer out. It just it's it's scared itself. <laughs> so. So this is just some random account that um, I have through my district. And so if I go here, hi, let's go back to Drive. So I just have two files in it. It created the classroom file for me as a student. This is a student's um, view. And then these are all the classes that I signed the student up for. As you can tell, I've been playing with it a lot. Um, my most recent one was demo class. So if I click on it and it has all the assignments, oh, it just has assignments in it for 
all the assignments that I did for that class. Oh, that's not exactly what I thought it was. So, um, yeah, so you can see classroom, and then the demo class one is the actual name of the class, and then all the assignments will be put in there. So I guess there would be, okay. there should be a better way to organize it, but that's how it is right now. But I mean, that's... That's okay. At least they know, as long as they know the name of their class or whatever, they should be able to find the assignment. So yeah. you can search. I mean, the search tools are great, so really it's not that big of a deal. So Yeah. There we go. Am I back? I think I'm back. Yeah, so, I mean, it does somewhat organize it for you, which is really helpful, I think. Because, you know, my students would create things, and then they would just have, like, this big jumble of a mess. I'm like, okay, you have a fifth-grade folder. Put it inside your yeah. fifth-grade folder. And I'm like, because I right. make them, I have them. Do you have a fifth-grade folder? Share the fifth-grade folder with me, and so now you'll never have to deal with me, you know, sharing anything right. with me again. Okay, well, they, they right. kind of got that. But then they would forget to put things in their fifth grade folder. I'm like, I don't know where and, stuff is. And I do, you know, there, there's these two sides of the, of, the, of, the, of the camp. She got, okay, we need to make technology disappear, right? So they can just do their, do their work. And, and that kind of obfuscates all the need to, to uh, manage your files. But they still need to know how to do that. And I think that that's valuable for them, even if it doesn't always go as smoothly as you, as you think. I think that that's still um, uh, something they need to know how to do. And if it's done in the background, they don't, they don't, ha they don't ha think about that. They don't think about that much. Yeah, they need that. They definitely need that um, accountability to it. All right, so it is now 5.40, and we are supposed to be ending our session about now. Okay. Okay. Well, this well, thanks. was good. That was awesome. Thank, thanks, thank you Lisa. So much. Thanks, Both Vicky. It's good to hang out with you again. Nice to meet you, George. Nice to meet you, too. I think this is – I'm really going to try and build my, my, my PLN this year, and you guys are definitely part of that. So Awesome. Uh, Can't wait to awesome, hang George. in with you. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> thanks. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.